This video is the first in the series of videos that are going to guide you through the financial analysis assignment number two. This is the beginner video, which means I'm going to assume that you don't know Excel, have never used Excel before, or have only used it very, very uh, briefly. So I'm going to go into detail for all of the functions and each steps that we follow. If you feel comfortable using Excel and want to go faster, please refer to the advanced set of videos. To get started, we need to go into Blackboard, go into financial, st financial analysis assignment number two, and find the data set. Open the data and save it to your computer. Once the file is opened, you'll get a message up on top telling you um, to be careful. Um, despite everything you're reading in the news, I can assure you this Excel file is safe, so we want to choose Enable Editing. That is, allows us to start working in the document. So what we have here is uh, variables in columns A through N. These are all the different variables we're looking at and the observations are for publicly traded. This is financial statement data on an annual basis for publicly traded companies between the years 2010 and 2018. You've been assigned to do this analysis for one specific two-digit SIC code. The first thing we need to do is Gener create a variable equal to that two-digit SIC code. We see here in column N a four-digit SIC code. Uh, SIC codes, as we can see, I, I'm going to choose SIC code 32 for my analysis. Um, SIC codes go down to four-digit. That's the most detailed. Um, the two-digit is slightly less detailed. Uh, I'm going to look at SIC code 32 stone, clay, glass, and concrete products. Uh, your specific SIC code, you will not be doing SIC code 32. Your specific two digit SIC code can be found in Blackboard's Grade Center. So let's create a variable. Let's name it, let's put our cursor into cell O1, and then let's name our new variable SIC2 for the two digit SIC code. And what we're going to do is find the first two digits of the four digit SIC code that we see here in column N. In order to do that, we need a formula. In Excel, for a formula, we have to start with the equal sign. That tells Excel we're about to input a formula. We're not just writing our data contents for that cell. We need to put an open parentheses to work on our formula. And it's actually a function. The function that we want is called left because we want the left digits from contents in cell N2. So now it says return the specif returns the specified number of characters from the start of a text screen. Sorry, my mistake. I, I need, I don't want this open parentheses here. I want equals function left, then open parentheses. And it tells me, Excel is prompting me, what text do you want to take the left side for? So then I want to just select cell N2. That's telling Excel, go to cell N2, look to the left, and then comma to prompt Excel to ask for how many characters do you want starting from the left side? We want two digits, so I'm going to just write type two. Close the parentheses to tell Excel that we're finished and hit enter. And I can easily check this. Looks like it works. So I want to drag down the, this formula, this function that I just put in. I can see here when I highlight column N that we have uh, about 76,000 observations. So clearly I don't want to do this 76,000 times. Select cell O2, the one with a function in it. And if I hover over this bottom corner, I see a black plus sign. That's what I want. Double click, double left click that black plus sign and it copies that function all the way down. So, and I can see down here, it says there are 75,719 um, observations in the field SIC2, which is exactly what I want. As I scroll down, I can do a quick check and it looks like this uh, makes sense. It's pulling the first two digits from the four digit SIC code. Great. Now the next thing that I want to do, probably need to save periodically, 
after I save my document, the next thing I want to do is apply a filter because I only want my assigned SIC, two digit SIC code. So how do we filter this data so that I can only view the data for, in my case, SIC 232? I'm going to, I want to select this first row to add a filter. So if I move my cursor over this one here on the left, and I see that my cursor is turned into a black arrow on the left side, and then I left click, it's highlighted. Everything across here is highlighted. I'm going to go to data up at the ribbon on top, and then scroll over to filter, left click to choose the filter. Now I look at my data and I see a filter. So I can filter this data and look at just a certain year if I want to. But I want all years. I want all companies for now. And the filter that I want to apply is for my two digit SIC code. So for SIC2, I click the drop down. Currently everything is showing. That's typically how we want it to start off. I'm going to check the box next to select all because I don't want all of them. I want my one assigned SIC code that's two digits. Come down to 32, check the box, hit OK. And now I have financial statement data for all companies within SIC code 32. This was glass and uh, what else was it? Glass, stone, clay, and concrete products between 2010 and 2018. I want to copy this data into a new worksheet so that I'm only looking at the data. You see here on the left side, we can see our row numbers are highlighted in blue. That blue indicates to us that other data is, exists in the worksheet, but it's not viewable. I want to add a new worksheet, so I'm going to come down here below. Actually, before I do, let me rename this, this worksheet. It says Sheet 1. I'm going to right-click over Sheet 1, left-click for Rename, and I'm going to rename this document All Data. Enter. And now I'm going to increase, uh, hit the plus sign here to add a new worksheet. This is the worksheet that I'm going to use to paste all of that information, but only for my one two-digit SIC code. I'm going to name this worksheet, so I'm going to right-click down in the worksheet name, rename, and call this Industry Data. You don't have to use the exact same names, but please do something similar where I can identify what, so that the user of this data will know what does that information relate to on that, on that worksheet. Okay, let's return to all data. So go back to highlight where we see the worksheet for, for all data, left click. And while everything is showing just for my SIC code, I'm gonna move my cursor over to this box that's to the left of A and above row one, and I'm gonna left click. That selects everything. I'm gonna copy. In order to copy, I'm gonna use the shortcut. I'm gonna hold control button down and select C. Control C in a uh, Windows computer is the shortcut for copy. I see these dancing lights, that means Excel is copying all of the data that's only that's viewable here. Now, if you're working on a Mac, these shortcuts are gonna have different names. It might not be Control C. You'll need to um, pause this video and do a search to find out if you don't know what the shortcut is for a Mac, find out what, what it may be for your computer. Okay, this information is all copied. I want to paste it onto this industry data worksheet. So I'm going to select the industry data, make sure my cursor, my mouse is in A1, and then I'm going to paste that data with Control V. And now I have the data only for SIC2. You'll see these green bars here, that's fine, you can completely ignore that, this is correct. When I highlight again, I see 231 observations. I had here 231. So what's the difference between these two files? This file I can filter. It has every all of the data here. We're just only viewing SIC code 32. And this file here is only has the data for SIC 32. 
We have all the necessary data now to begin our analysis. The next video is going to walk you through the steps to generate six variables that we're going to look at. If you look at the instruction sheets, scroll down to the second page, we see here these are the ratios that we're going to create. Net profit margin, earnings per share, return on assets, return on equity, current ratio, liabilities to assets. We're going to generate these variables based on the data that we see here. So if you think about earnings per share, we want net income minus preferred dividends. If you're wondering how these variable names correspond, how I knew that DVP was preferred dividends, we have to use this chart here of variable names. This is the first page of the analysis instructions sheet. Variable names and variable definitions. These are not my definitions. These are definitions coming from the database where I extracted this data from. So back to earnings per share, that would be net income minus uh, preferred dividends in parentheses divided by number of shares outstanding, which we have here. We're going to do that in columns P through U, these six columns. We're going to create those six variables, and you can find that information in the next video.